Jaffa, the city, was the biggest Arab-Palestinian city before the war of 1948. The biggest I and mean, demographic, now it's hard to imagine, this, but we were bigger than Gaza or Nablus or any other famous city. It was the most important economic center in Palestine. All this thing was transferred after the war into a small, poor, criminal neighborhood. Okay? During the tour, I want to explain this change from being the most important Arab-Palestinian city to a small, poor, criminal neighborhood. This is one of the rare cases all over historical Palestine where you have both sides of the conflict sharing the same space. Jaffa Orange was the most famous, more famous than anything you can imagine. We were more famous than Mercedes or Nike or Dolce and Gabbana or anyone that you know. Jaffa Orange was more famous. Now, all this street that we are passing in was called Talamas Street. Talamas was a rich Catholic family. They were the owners of this nice house before the war of 1948. Now, as a famous place for exporting oranges, and as Catholic believers, Talamas, the man, was sending the Pope in the Vatican every year few of the finest boxes of oranges from Jaffa as a present to the Pope. The Pope loved this present and made Mr. Talamas a count. The original family, like the rest of the Jaffans, in the 1948 war, out of 120,000 people, only 3,900 were left. All the rest became refugees all over the world. Not just the Talamas, all of Jaffa. <laughs> all the Palestinian minority were concentrated only in the Ajami. Because out of 120,000 people, only 3,900 were left. To control us better, we were surrounded with a fence and concentrated only in the Ajami neighborhood under military control. The European Jews that survived the Holocaust called our neighborhood a ghetto. And we didn't know what's a ghetto before Zionism. The, and we didn't know the world at all. By the way, in the official papers in Israel, 1950s, we are called Ghetto Ajam. What's important here is to try to reimagine the space when we were part of the decision making. Okay? This stopped in 1948, and Jaffa had one of the first municipalities in Palestine in 1870s that continued working as an independent city that has a municipality till 1948. One of the most important results of the war was this fact that we lost our independence also locally, not just on the, inter and on the national level. And we don't have any more municipality planning for us. Still today, the state of Israel, when it gets to land and housing, they plan for us like enemies. We should be kept in smaller areas, less land, all the time. Delta Force was filmed in the Ajami neighborhood because in the 1980s, the Ajami looked like Lebanon during the Civil War. There was so much destruction in the neighborhood that it looked like Beirut during the Civil War. Now, as you can see, everything is being changing dramatically. It is one of the most wanted areas in the real estate market. The most important thing happening in the last 20 years in this part of Jaffa is called gentrification, where rich people from all over the world, mainly Jewish, rich, only Jewish rich people, coming to buy in this poor neighborhood. Let's see the place, you see the view, and then I tell you how much does it cost. For example, this villa here, it's an old an Islamic, uh, a Palestinian villa. It was sold lately for 9 million euros. 
and an apartment in this building would cost also a few anything. Also, the rent here is totally crazy. The, 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 the Danish ambassador was living in this part of the Ajami. The embassy was paying $12,000 a month for rent in a neighborhood where 50% of the population are under the poverty line. People can't think in these numbers. Okay? Now, usually what happens in the world is that the poor people enjoy this process because they can sell their property for more money. But because of all the racist Israeli laws, we cannot also enjoy that. We have in this small neighborhood 400 families that have either eviction orders or destruction orders on their houses nowadays. Okay? We have 200 families waiting on the line for public housing. Part of them has been on this line more than 10 years, part of them more than 15 years. And the state tells them, yes, you are right, you are under all the criteria and you deserve public housing. But we are not building public housing. In my point of view, politically, what's happening is economic transfer of the local community. And what, what was not finished in the year 1948 is now being finished with what Israel calls the free market. It's only one component of the housing issue is gentrification. We have a lot of other components, like the fact that all the area was robbed by the Zionist project in 1948. We don't have any control of land in the case of Jaffa. All the land is controlled by the state. And now the state is enjoying gentrification because they can sell our land that they never bought from us for a lot of money in the free market. So we're not controlling land. You have Tel Aviv municipality planning for us. Only Jews are planning the place. And it looks normal for everyone. The fact that all of the planning department is totally Jewish looks totally normal for everyone. See, between the year 1950-1993, there weren't one Arab representative in the city council. And since 1993 till today, we have one out of 31 every election. Now we have zero. Now, nowadays in Tel Aviv, there isn't one Arab man or woman in the city council. And it looks totally normal. All the new couples that cannot afford buying or renting in the place, in order to go to have a place to live, they have to live at least till the cities of Lot and Ramli. This is bringing to the destruction of the families. And in our society, the family is playing big role in the life of the individual. So the process is making total destruction to the people, to the society, to the community. Because all the Jewish areas surrounding us never built a mosque or a church or Arab schools or kindergarten. So you don't have all the basic services that you need to be developed as a community. So people then, when they leave, the society is being destroyed. And the process is being very fast. This is why people are dealing with the housing issue as existential problem. And it's, they can't exist without any housing rights are different than other kinds of rights. It's not like freedom of expression. Okay, it's important freedom of expression, but if you don't have it, and you are staying in your place, you can struggle for the future for freedom of expression. But if you don't have housing, you can't continue to be here at all in order to fight for the, you. You will not exist in the future. They brought part of the activists and asked us, guys, we have a huge amount of money, 180 million shekels, to do a change in the mountain of garbage. What do you want to do? We told them, guys, if we are talking about 180 million shekels, leave the mountain of garbage alone. Let's solve the housing problem. And if you are asking our views, what do we want to do? We need housing because the population grew from 4,000 in 1948 to something like 20,000. Meanwhile, all the northern neighborhood were totally crushed. Manchia do not exist anymore. The old city was transferred into artist's village. We can't live there. Ajami, you destroyed there something like 3,000 apartments and we are having less apartments and growing. So our main problem is housing. And if you want to give money, let's build new neighborhood. So they told us that we are stupid and we don't understand anything in planning. We told them, you know what guys, if you don't want to solve the housing problem, 
Let's try to do equality in education between Jaffa and Tel Aviv. It is the same city, same municipality. Let's try to do equality in education. They told us, are you stupid? The money is for the mountain of garbage. We want to build you something in the... What do you want to do? But you, know, you know what? If it's only for the mountain of garbage, take all the garbage out, bring back our beach. Historically, the beach in Jaffa got till here. This is where the beach was here. All what you see between this line and the water is totally garbage. They told us, no, no, guys, it's going to be too expensive. We want to do you a park on the mountain of garbage. We told them, but guys, we don't need a park. And this is a huge, you know, this is from the south. This is a huge park. We don't need something like this. And if all the Arabs and Jews in Jaffa want to do a barbecue, they don't need all this. It's too much. They told us, no, no, you don't understand. What kind of a park you would like to have? So the Arab activists told them, you are imposing on us a park that we do not need. You should know that when we go to a park, we like to do barbecues. It could be nice that if you will be the barbecues built in, in shaded areas, with a lot of chairs because we are big families. So now if you will walk on the park, the biggest number of signs you will see that we are not allowed to do barbecues. Once I remember criticizing the whole thing. And one of the people of the municipality told me, Yani Abu Shahde, what do you want to say? This park is not nicer than the mountain of garbage. Yes, it is nicer than the mountain of garbage. But we don't need this. We have totally different needs. We have totally different interests. A park is nicer than a mountain of garbage in general. Yes, I have to admit. But we don't need this. We, have, we still have much more basic things that we need before to get it. At least to solve the problem of housing. But when they are planning in Tel Aviv municipality, they don't care about our interests or our needs. They have something totally different in their minds. They want to convince the upper middle classes to come and live here. This is what they, they are planning for someone else.